Inquiry-based learning is about authentic engagement, taking things apart and learning things. Oh, okay. there, that's, yeah, that's sheer. sheared, so it's straight. That's up there stringy, and that's the high-quality DNA. That would be the more low-quality DNA. It may not start out as exactly what the teacher had engineered or intended, but the kids are going to get deeper and deeper. And what we find is that that sort of passion about what am I learning and how do I connect the dots here becomes a transferable habit. They're going to treat everything in their life in that way. How do I understand this more? Where do I learn more about this? How do I do this better? We need to be able to clearly articulate as teachers what it is that we want students to walk away with at the end of a unit or a year of study. And unless we can clearly articulate that, there's no way for us to be able to assess and know if our students indeed are coming away with what we hope that they will. We want to start with the big picture in mind and work backwards. So we asked ourselves as a faculty, students that come through here pre-K-12, what do we want them to look like? What would the portrait of a CDS graduate be? What is it we want them to truly understand about the various disciplines they're exposed to throughout their lives in school? And so we work together in vertical teams, in disciplines, to, to determine the key understandings, the key concepts, or the essential truths for each discipline, and we call those enduring understandings. And the enduring understandings will guide teachers in making the important choices about just what they're going to teach. The fourth grade theme of perspective was brought into the Middle Ages unit by us. For one, um, we taught the students, we showed them how to play a simulation game, and they had to simulate all the different levels of the feudal system. Then afterwards, we reflected on that, and they got to kind of write about how did that feel? Did you think the feudal system was fair? Also in our research, we brought perspective into the unit by um, each person would write about different things. Some people are writing about peasants, some are writing about women, some are writing about knights, crusaders so they're each getting a different piece of the perspective during that time period of the Middle Ages. Building of the catapults allowed them to think about what was important in the Middle Ages and why would they put so much time and effort into building these huge catapults and so that we were able to talk about how the building of catapults and other weaponry was such a big part of the Middle Ages because battle was important and war was important and that led us to why was war important and it was because the commodity of land and they would fight for their land, they would take land from others. The students had to work together in a group, they had to communicate with each other, they had to problem solve. They also had the opportunities to fail and fix things. The process of building our catapult was the wood wasn't as hard, but the string, we broke it about three times and kept having to fix it. So they experienced things messing up and fixing them. They also had choices in their catapult of where to put different pieces of it. And by doing that, they were able to test it and then they'd come back and think, well, no, maybe it would work better this way. So it allowed them all these different skills that will be so important in different endeavors in their life. We wanted the students to realize that people have different perspectives, that those perspectives come from information, come from experiences, comes, come from things that they've done or seen, come from their parents. And also we wanted them to gain respect for different people's perspective. The essential questions are, are the focus, if you will, to, for any given unit of study. So if we want to lead, help students come to a, an idea of a big concept, we want to ask those kinds of questions and have them posted in our rooms to help direct our thinking and our learning. We decided we wanted inquiry at the heart of every classroom. And so how can we get inquiry at the heart of, of every lesson every day? And that is with essential questions. We want students to not just look for answers, but to, to know that when they, when they discover an answer, to know the next step is to ask, OK, so what's the next question? The narrator, the way it's written, it's trying to make it seem like the people who have her are the bad guys 
We started with a language arts unit on the unreliable narrator. And what we really wanted the students to understand was that whoever is telling the story, they have a reason and they have a motivation for wanting the actual person who's reading to believe what they say. The impact of the unreliable narrator in a reader's understanding is a lot of times there's two sides and the way the person writes with bias or their point of view, it makes you side with one or the other. And we started with having them read some short stories that showed unreliable narrators. And by the end of it, they had to go back and look and think about what the motivation and the cause was. We took that next leap into the history aspect of social studies. We talked about in history how there's an unreliable narrator, so you can't really trust everything that you read. The reading of The Highwaymen kind of piggybacks off of the Paul Revere poem that they read. They had to look at a piece that had no particular perspective or bias. It was just third person. So it really took that whole piece of reading other people's perspectives and bias and having to synthesize that and apply it in their own way. In The Highwayman, which was the poem, we're rewriting it from one of their characters' perspectives. Essential questions are so important because they see them up there every day, and it becomes that background focus that they look to, they'll point to them, and so what it ended up happening is they got to connect the dots themselves. We didn't just stand up there and say, hey, this is what you need to believe, and this is how you need to believe it. They actually were making those leaps every single time they read something. Perhaps. We have to look at all different sides of history, because if we don't, we're never going to get the right truth. And is there really a right truth? And how can we not question these things? Why are we just going to take it at face value? In putting inquiry at the heart of all that we do in the classroom, students are able to see that one, as teachers, we are engaged in inquiry along with them all the time. We're not looking for answers, we're really looking for questions that will lead us to, mo to more knowledge and then more understanding and to the next question. And then for, for students as well to then learn to pose their own questions, so we do that together and then that leads them to be able to do that independently, which is what will help them when they get out into the real world and in their lives, whether that's the working world or socially or in relationships, to be able to um, um, ask the kinds of questions to solve the kinds of problems and create dynamic solutions that, that will empower them. So we've spent a great deal of time collaborating between divisions, within divisions, um, all the way across the pre-K-12 curriculum. Here, instead of being like an oak grove, we really are like an aspen grove, which is the largest living organism in the world. And that is because all of the roots are connected. We've collaborated together to make sure that we have a very cohesive and comprehensive program for our students. The kids are given a structured lab, then they build off of that to make their own lab, and then they present their results, and then they listen to what their other classmates have done and develop another new technique. Essentially what they're doing is learning how to extract DNA and that is an essential skill in some of the later labs that we're going to do. This provides a good opportunity to explore and try new techniques. The process that I'm working on is called electrophoresis and it's a way of quantifying amounts and size of DNA pieces and concentration of DNA. If there is a way that we can look at the gels that we get and determine who has the best, I said, I don't know what best means. We have this solution of DNA, and what we do is we take it and we mix it with this blue dye, and we mix up a gel. And so Hope started with some known samples of DNA. She ran them in the gels. She took a look at them. We found a computer program online that would help us analyze them. She is developing all the protocols for evaluating who has the best DNA. Um, and that is even more open-ended. The students are analyzing those gels um, and trying to apply that to their results. And, and I think that's a good exercise in data analysis. Um, and to some extent, we're all kind of trying to understand the data we've got um, in new ways. The answer lies within the gels we ran and within how we interpret the gels that we got and the data that we got. So I find that really exciting. What I really like is that once they get into it, 
then they start to ask the questions. Well, what if I did this next time? And what if I did this next time? And maybe I should repeat this experiment, but change this little thing. Next time we do a DNA lab, they're gonna take what they've learned here and then apply it in the new situation. Did they learn a lot? I think they've learned a lot. When are they gonna realize that they've learned a lot? When they have to solve another problem. The outcomes of our education um, are that kids are, have inquiring minds that they not only know how to solve problems that they're placed in front of them, but they find those problems, they see those problems all around them. And they know how to gather the resources to solve them.